Welcome back, folks. This is lesson 24. And the subject I've chosen today for you is, is not in England at all. It's in Egypt. And this is the Pyramids of Giza and, of course, the Sphinx. Ancient monuments, well, really ancient, because uh, the the Sphinx and is about 4,800 years old, uh, as, as well as the pyramids. And the pyramids were, were a height of 147 metres, which was the highest uh, peak in the world for about 3,800 years. There's been all sorts of built since then that's, that's higher, but uh, but that, that's the potted history of it. The colours are the deep blue, the raw sienna, the deep blue is, is a, for a clear sky. The sketch is there, which is, is ready for you just to transfer onto your, onto your watercolour paper. And uh, with the, the Sphinx is, is already there. It's been damaged, of course, in, in, with, in wars and things like that. And uh, in fact, Napoleon's gunners uh, had a, used it as a target practice. They didn't blow his nose off. Not a very nice thing to do, but, but that's, that's what happened. Uh, we need to sort of uh, get this organised now. The, the colours I've mixed, I say, are the darkest blue, the, that's a winter blue red shade, and also my raw sienna, which I like for, for sand and stuff like that. Well, right, let's move the sketch. And I've, what I've also done is, is I've put some uh, masking tape on that, that these pyramids to protect it while I'm painting the sky. It... Uh, it, it's been I'm putting a wash of uh, clean water on to help the sky to move freely when I'm when I'm painting it on. This is a, a nice wash of clean water. Be careful when you're doing this because uh, around, especially around the Sphinx, because I don't want blue on the Sphinx. And round the round the edge of it, that's it, nice and steady. And of course, uh, and the the masking tape is protecting the the pyramids. Still some more water to put on there to make it even all over. Especially around the back of the Sphinx. Just there. Just remember that the sky is about three quarters of the painting, so uh, so it, it's a big area. So we've got to get that right, haven't we? It's worth spending some time on it before you start the twiddly bits. So. We're just about ready now to put that lovely blue colour on, darkest blue. And what I want to do is, is put this blue on at the top, very strong, across the top here. And keep it strong. And then when I come down the, down the sky, it won't be adding more colour to it. It's just pulling the, the existing blue down and the water on the actual picture will weaken the blue of the sky and give you a gradiated sky. In other words, it gives you some. The, it appears that the the back, the bottom part of the sky, goes further into the distance, and the strong bit is, of course, is is, is above you, which is closest to you. So we're trying to get our three-dimensional look again. You can go over them. Uh, Pyramid there, see it's protected, but be careful around the around the Sphinx. Just be careful. We don't want to have a blue nose, do we? Just keep cracking on. We're nearly there.
down there. I've gone over to it there, so put the tissue on it, <coughs> just lift it out. And a bit on the back of the sphinx there, let's get rid of that. Right, it's hair dryer time now, I think. Let it dry that off so we can work further on the, on the actual painting. Appears dry now that. <coughs> Take some of this, pull some of this tape off the off the pyramids now. And look at that lovely clean line it's left us. That's lovely, isn't it? Just a bit of blue gone in, 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 in between that gap there. I've got to push that and try and move that if I can. Yeah, just shift that. Oh that's got it. Got rid of it. Yeah, good. So everything in the garden is lovely there. So we've got a nice clean sky. We've got a nice clean sphinx and nice clean pyramids. What more do you want? That bit's still wet there, so I want to make sure before I go anywhere near it, it's dry. Because if, if you don't dry it, what happens is you, you put a colour next to it and it, it bleeds into each other and spoils your painting. You don't want that. Right, the raw sienna, or the ochre, whichever you're using, just get this, get, I'm trying to get rid of some of this white, you know I don't like white there because it spoils the picture to start with, It uh, you can't get the balance of colours right. So give it a wash of this, Ooh, be careful, down that line there, and down the far side. I've got these pyramids in it, they, they're not, when you get up close, they're not as neat as this, you know, they, 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 they block and all sorts, but uh, for, for our, our purposes, they, 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 look, they look nice and tidy. The lumps not been knocked out and all sorts, but, but it's, it's, it's a lovely scene, actually. As we go, keep going with that. And of course, the uh, what the Egyptians intend to do, uh, I, I, I haven't been there since about 2012, but the idea was is to build up the, uh, put a, a new museum just by the pyramids there, to house uh, Tutankhamun's relics and all that, the, the, the mask and everything. And instead of having to go into the centre of Cairo, which, which I've done that as well, and, and that, it's a right bind because you've got to go into the city centre. There's so much traffic, and it just, it just, it's just so busy. The, the 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 museum is busy as well, so I think a new a new uh, museum on the site will be ideal, and then sort of make it one one visitor centre be terrific. Whether they've done it or not yet, I, I'm not sure. I don't know, but but I'm, I'm sure they'll get round to it if they haven't done it. So I'm just filling in this, uh, this, the undercoat, if you like, of the Sphinx, and the, the it's all the same colour. This is the Sphinx and the other pyramids for a start. And then we'll, we'll start sculpturing when we get further down the line. Just keep it growing. Good, all covered now. Just 
just about. Dry it a bit more now. See that that's that that this other coat that wants drying as well before you can work on it. It speeds things up a bit. This I mean, if, if you haven't got an air dryer, all you just sit back and wait and have a sandwich or something. But from my point of view, it's it's I want to get it cracking and get the thing finished so, so I can show it you when I've done. Feels a bit dry now, that's all right. This amount, the amount, in, the, amount in, the amount of people we get at these places is, is quite quite staggering. And of course, the uh, the actual Sphinx to the top of its head from the base is uh, 62 feet or or 20 meters in new money so when you I'll be able to put some figures in later but when we do we, we need to make sure that the, the figures are relative to the size of the Sphinx in fact not too big and not too small so we better just gauge and check it out but uh, first of all, that, that's going on with the pyramids. I'm, I'm, I'm introducing some shapes because it's built with stone. There's layers of stone going up there, then. So I'm just in, trying to indicate it for you. Just to, I, I don't want to put every stone in or anything like that. It's just to say, right, these are stone. And I'm doing it with this flat brush, which is handy for this because it, it does straight lines for me. Just keep dropping them in. And the colour of, of the it's a little bit darker this but so what I've done to get that colour is I've added a touch of that burnt umber we've used in the past, what we use for skies and that a touch of that into it which has darkened it slightly. And at any time I want to darken these things and make it darker, I add a touch of burnt umber into it. And if I want it really dark, I'll put some of that uh, that wind uh, ultramarine because that, that gives you a nice dark. But this is this is gradually coming together, and of course the light today is is uh, coming from the from the left. So eventually, those uh, the right hand side of the, the pyramids and that will be in shape. Be careful when you do that little one at the back, because there's not a lot showing. Some indications on that side of the the pyramid. It's, it's quite interesting there because the when you're around the pyramids there and, and looking at it, there's uh, policemen on camels. Camels, would you believe it? And if there's anybody sort of that these uh, people selling stuff that they shouldn't be there, uh, they, they chase after them with, on the camels. They don't have a blue light flashing on on its, on its home or anything like that, but, but it's uh, it's quite interesting to watch. There's no sound, you know, apart from the the, the, the camera making a noise, but but no blue light or anything like that. So I'm made it a bit darker this now to give, get, put more shadowy area into there. And it makes it look a bit more three dimensional. I said, don't pull, pull all these lines in, it'll look, it'll look terrible. Keep, put a few of this side. Smaller brush here to get that, that little pyramid at the back there. That's a little a small 
with a quarter inch flat brush. Over the years I've accumulated these these brushes that uh, that make life easier for me. That, that last one was a half inch brush I think and, and the, this one's a quarter inch so it, uh, it, it all makes life easier instead of struggling. And this, uh, the, the, I'm, I'm indicating some, some angled lines on this, this like a bank here, and the, the reason it is a bank this is because the the Sphinx itself was uh, covered by sand for many, many, many centuries, so people didn't know where it was, and it would it was it was uh, unearthed fully in about 1930. So it, it really, that there's if you think that the top of the head of the Sphinx was was level to like level ground near, near the pyramids. So nobody saw it because it was it was below the ground. But of course, once they excavated it, it, it created a sort of a, a like a ravine or a, or a, a valley or what, what you like, a, an area which is excavated. So that, that creates sides to it to, to, to down down to where the excavation is. So I'm just indicating on this this side here direction of where it's sloping. Just to, just to let you know that that's coming from the top of the hill down. And then it's where it's going down to. That what's going down to is, is a path. And this path takes you from, from the Sphinx and you can walk from the Sphinx right up to the, the pyramids or the other way about, whichever way you like. It's all part of the experience. Tidy it up a little bit. In fact, what the 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 uh, so the pathway it comes as say from the from where the feet of the Sphinx are, right across, and then travels towards the towards where the the the, the path takes you up up out of the. Gradually takes you out of the out of this uh, pit pit affair, this where the Sphinx is, back to the pyramids. I'll just keep sculpturing it and marking it, and get this this bottom bit, which is a bit flatter, into there now. We're starting to get some tones of this. It's the same same color values, but 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 the tones are different. So, so it's creating a, a, a our three dimensional look instead of the flat flat wash of the raw sienna. In fact, when I was in Egypt and that, and we also went to the what they call the Valley of the Kings, and I was expecting you know some marvelous buildings with all, all sorts of things like that. When I got there, all it is is some holes in the side of these mountains. I was quite disappointed, but when you think about it, that the the reason they've been hidden for thousands of years is because they, that's what they did. They, they excavated them and and put all their their, their kings and, and queens and important people into these uh, these these. These uh, sort of holes they dug and, and put, uh, decorate them inside and there's uh, hieroglyphics and sort of all sorts down there. And all the, the, the goodies like uh, the coffins and stuff like that and cosophagus or whatever they call them. And uh, all, all inside. And blimey, I'll tell you what. I tried to take some photographs in one of them and this this bloke with the... with an Arab that... Uh, he goes to turban or whatever, he, he, went, he went bananas. Because they're not allowed to take photographs inside. Whether well, it affects the the, the, the hieroglyphic stuff, I don't know. But anyway, he, he, he got a bit upset. I didn't do it on purpose, he just, uh, I'm just interested. But uh, you do these things, don't you?
and they'll get it right. You must push on with this and keep it keep it coming down and flowing. We should be alright. to these a bit yes that's it these are some crevices and cracks in, 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 in the stone it is but it's been and it, it's I'm, I'm doing it a bit darker because of course that will bring it m more to the front won't it because it's it's it's, it's, it's closer to us so all the time you're doing your pages always think of that the stuff in the distance is paler than stuff in the foreground. Keep putting the odd crevices in there. I'm saving this thing till last because it's it's nice and fiddly that. Pressure on his nose. Was being knocked off by Napoleon. Real vandals that. Of course, I suppose over the time, uh, if it had been exposed, it would have eroded even further. And the fact that it was buried in sand has, has kept the uh, the monument as good as it is today. Because it's 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 like sandstone, and that and it's uh, it. The wind and the, the what have you would obviously attack the the shapes and things like that and uh, would, would would ruin it. So so really being buried has done us a favour really. So that's since 1930, which is less than 100 years ago, it's been dug up. And of course, a lot of these these uh, tombs and stuff like that have been plundered by by sort of experts. And people like that, and tomb raiders, and call them what they like. So we we start, start on the on the Sphinx now. Let, let's have a go at the Sphinx. Now, I've, I've picked out the, these the the headdress. It's a headdress. This that's it's, that's on the Sphinx around the top there. Let's let's get the sort of the folds in that for a start. It's, it's a fiddly one. This. It's, a, it's, it's nearly as bad as Norwich Cathedral, what we did last. But not, not that bad. No, it's, 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 it's manageable, this one. That's, that's, the, that's the far side of the, the headdress. There. She doesn't look very pleased, does she? I think it's a woman, anyway. But it's, it's, got, it's got a lion body. But a, a woman's head. Sure it was a woman. No, I don't know for certain, mind. Don't quote me. Just, just keep, keep on doing your crevices and stuff like that. I can't say mind the nose because there isn't one. But uh, where it was, there's, a, there's an eye there. In fact, there's two eyes. But it get them in, and the eyes are really just holes now. A bit. So where these are, this is the front. I said the light today is from the left, isn't it? So this this portion of the of the painting is is uh, in shade. It, it's away from the sun, so so it will be darker than the the side of the the, the monument anyway. Just keep it running down there. It's a bit therapeutic. This one, it's it's it's, it's relaxing. You, you 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 haven't got to think much. You just got to follow the follow the sort of get the indentations and lines and that. It's got two feet there, and just see you can just see the back one.
and so where, where things have been knocked off and stuff like that. Of course, with this, this Napoleon's gunners have, have knocked bits off and all that, but bits. So we're just indicating sort of the, some of the, the the darker areas. You'll be all right with this one. You'll, you'll do it in no time. And the neighbours will be so impressed. They'll be saying, when did you go to Egypt? Just tell them you just come back. No, you don't come back with a white face. You've got to, you've got to have a tan. Because it's blooming hot out there. And there's no shade on this, this area at all. Just keep... The, the Sphinx is starting to take a bit of shape now. We've lost that flatness about it. Keep and, and have, a, have, a, have a stop sometime just have, oh, and, and take it and take stock of what you've got and where you're going to paint your next bits. Or sometimes you can you can carry on painting and, and paint the bit, bit you don't want. That'll be dark under the chin there. These these crevices and stuff like that. And believe it or not, I'm thinking while I'm doing this as well. Just to find out where to go. That'll anchor, anchor down the, the feet, or the legs in fact. The, the paws or the feet or wherever they are, at the, at the end there, but the legs, is, he's sat down, it's like a lion. The front front of the feet and that or the, the claws will be in shade, won't they? So a little bit darker. Get the air dryer and you can dry it a bit before I start moving. Of course, if I try and put a, a, a darker colour on this when it's still wet, it'll just, it'll just bleed into each other and, and uh, you lose the effect or, or spoil the spoil the painting, in fact. So there's areas which want drying, so dry it off and be patient, which I'm not. And as soon as it's dry, then you can get going again with your brush. Let's see, that's better. Right, what shall we do next? So I think. Let's darken the front of these paws for a bit. And that darkness, you see, it's immediately brought it forward in front of the pyramids and everything. It's, 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 it's in the foreground now. So we've given it depth. So the pale's in the distance and the dark's in the foreground. I like this colour, I'm going to use some more of that. See what we've got. You're going to really have some fun with this. You 
you can't go wrong. Because you want to be criticised, you just say, well, that's how I, I saw it. Get the eye in. There's one behind the behind what was the nose, just there. Doesn't look much like an eye, but uh, but that's what we've got. This is the front side of the the headdress. Which will be shaded. Of course, the, the line dropped on the headdress there and just indicated a bit more where the, where the darks are. That stands out a bit more now. And all I've done with the colour is, is put some of that burnt umber in, just to darken the darken the colour with the with the raw sienna or the ochre and, and put some burnt umber in. That's taking the colour down. So up to now we've, we've used three colours. Once you start mixing lots and lots of colours, you, 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 your paintings fall apart because they, uh, people don't know where to look. Because there's that much colour. That's from the chin. What was the chin? Back side of the headdress there. Sculpture this a little bit here. The shadow down there. I think that's part of the headdress. It goes down behind the face there. I think this bit is where the where the cannons hit it. You do some plastic surgery really. Mix a bit more colour for this. There, yeah, that's that's the colour. See there, I put some what I've put up that blue sky. I pinch a bit of that blue sky and put it into that burnt umber. And that'll give you a better dark, which will be on the shadow side. You see that's darker. You see. Steady hand for this bit. Go 
all these crevices in the in the front portion of the of the, the lion or whatever it is. I said, when you think about the size of it, 62 foot high to its top of its head. That's that's quite tall, or, or 20 meters. 20 meters, blind. That's 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 a, taller than the house, and that isn't it. Now, by putting some darks on this front first, you see, it's it, it's it's trying to make the uh, Sphinx a bit more three-dimensional. It's darker than the side, so it's looking so this this something a different shade on the front there. And of course, where the, the the legs come down, and the, this falls in the fur, or I suppose it's fur or was fur. We're supposed to depict fur. I know it's all stone, but uh, it's indicating what what, what they are. I mean, I'm guessing at this, it's, I'm, I'm not an Egyptian expert or something. If I knew what I'm talking about, I'd be a mastermind. But I don't. Definitely the tonal value of the of the Sphinx. Now you can see it's it's way way in front of the the pyramids, isn't it? Well, I can't wait to put some figures in. We need figures in this because there's always tourists there. We'll leave them to last, though. Don't rush it because you you're trying to get to the figures faster. Just take your time. Get these crevices in. I think what well, well, these I, I don't know whether it's, it's it's been sort of sculptured like this or whether it's it's the strata in the rock. I don't know. I'd, I'd guess it's been sculptured because they, they, they were too too neat and straight. I mean, we're talking we're talking four thousand eight hundred years ago. So what they used to do it with, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they didn't have Amazon. I suppose they had Amazon chisels then, but what were they like? I bet it's a big job. I'll tell you. I mean, when someone comes along, some king or queen or whatever it is, and says, look, I want to see a sphinx making 62 foot high. Uh, right, Mrs. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is, this is what she was, what they were doing. More, more falls in the, in the flesh of the, the, the legs there. But you can imagine, can't you, the, the, the lad's on sight there. Good God. 20 metres high, she wants it. Oh, it'll take forever. I mean, I'm sure some, somebody knows who, who, who organised all this and, and designed it all. And, and uh, I suppose if you look on Wikipedia or something like that, they would tell you. But I'll fill you in on the, on the, the, the dates. And the, the height of it, I said, the 147 meters is the top of the, the top of the pyramids, which was I said the highest building for 3,800 years. Until the, I think they, they built some cathedral that was higher. I'm not sure which one it was. I think it might have been Lincoln something like that. But anyway, 
uh, it, it's it's it stood for a long time as the highest highest monument. So that's a long time to be be the highest claim for the highest building. Now that they're building skyscrapers all over the world, that that uh, how they're going to stop that they're so they're so big. Which indicates that the underside of that way it's, it's darkest. I mean, I can remember going to uh, Kuala Lumpur and the, the, the Patronus Towers there. They, they were massive, really big. But but they they they're small now. So there's some something what they put up. Try and separate these two legs a bit. One's behind the other. That's a bit dark in there. We should have a pause sometime. Just have a look. I think it's, it's coming together, isn't it? That, that Sphinx thing. I'm, I'm depicting some of the, the the crevices and bumps it's had over the over the centuries, I suppose, and I'm just showing them. So it's it's it's, it's depicting it as it is, not not as it was. You can imagine how many people have been to see it since 1930, though, can't you? It's, it's and it's 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 well worth the trip. It's, it is a lovely area. More fiddle down here. I was on a trip from a cruise ship, and that's 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 where I went, went this time. And uh, and because I, I had to have a chuckle, there were, there were two two dear old American ladies, lovely ladies, and I, I, I couldn't help overhearing what they were talking about. She says, "G G Elmer, this is fantastic, isn't it?" And she, the MA says, yeah, but, but why do they build them so close to the road? You, know, I thought, you can't answer that. I try and keep out of it. So, uh, it, it was bothering her, but uh, they, they were lovely ladies. Have a check round, see what's happening. See what we're going to do next. Mix a bit more colour. A bit darker toned on, on some of these here to bring it forward a bit. All this is it's, it's some that burnt umber I told you about a, a weak weak wash of burnt umber just to take the the heat out of that uh, raw sienna.
the, the, the pyramids look a bit, a bit bland there, and just standing there. But we, we'll, we'll sort that out. It's uh, don't want to leave them as bland as that. But I don't want them to jump over the over the Sphinx and come into the foreground. They've got to stay back. But but not not to be bland. But all the time your picture is a balance of, of, of what's important to you, and and. As, as I decided to paint this, the the colours there, that's, that's the even that ultramarine, so I'm trying to put, mix some shadow colour now, ultramarine and burnt umber, which gives you a nice shadow colour, that. The beauty of them two colours, I've said to you previously, uh, they're both transparent colours, and when you put a shadow on there, what, what you painted before will, will, will still shine through, so the, the you can see through it, it's transparent. So let, let's get these pyramids looking a bit more, less bland. Immediately we start putting the shadow on there, you see. The, the, it's, it's more of a, a pyramid shape, isn't it? It's lost its flat, flat tone of a two-dimensional piece of paper. Nice and careful. Don't let the brush strip. So that that looks it, it looks more more solid, and it still doesn't intrude or come forward to interfere with the Sphinx. That's just what I wanted. Same with this one. There's that little little one that's in the distance. It's, it, it's, it's not. It, they are smaller these, but it's not just because they're in the distance it's smaller, they're, they're, they're smaller than the biggest one. Got the rigour on this one because they, they needed a bit more, bit more room, the, the bigger brush wouldn't, wouldn't take it. But that, that's given them a bit more shape, I like that. And perhaps some one or two marks under, under there to indicate the shadows under the brickwork. Don't go mad. Just a few. Better dry that off a bit now. Now we can put a bit of shade on this here because that's that's a, in the shade. It's, it's against the light. This from the, coming from the left, don't forget. So all the front part of that, that is going to be in shade. So you can still see the, the the lines in that through it, can't you? Which is which is why it's good for that transparent wash. That's in shade as well. Anything that's dark down here will be shadowy, shadowy, as you say. So 
levels. Thinks as soon as you put shadow on it, it, it starts a bit more three dimensional. And some of these these crevices on the on the hillside there, where they've dug it all out, that uh, that needs restating. And that will bring that the the the, the cutting out and that to bring it closer nearer than the pyramid so that that will take its place in in, in mid tone More shadow down here from where the claws are on the feet. I don't like to use the hairdryer to keep, keep kids moving fast. Otherwise you're going to sit here ages waiting for it to dry. That's better. We can start work again. The only time to put some figures in, I think it's uh, it, it, it's a bit lonely without figures. It uh, they're so important to this picture, a few figures, because it it gives you scale. See that's 60, 62 foot that. So the, this log we're putting in here, Fred, with his jumper on. He's got to be he's got to fit in there about ten times. So don't do him too big or he'll be a giant. And don't break him too small or he's a midget. So you just gotta get him just right. So just think just mentally, just say, Oh that will that go ten times into that of that end and, and you'll find that it, it will if you get it get it about right. And, and what I'm also doing is, is that's a path up there to go towards the mirror pyramids. I'm just indicating one or two dots on that, which is here. Uh, showing that people are walking up there as well. In fact, it's looking like a coach party, that, but not. We, we, we'll get a few more in before we're done. But the human interest helps, helps your painting. All right, Fred, he's got, he's got his posh trousers on there. Yes. He's on holidays, you see. One, two, dressed in white up there on the hillside. So when I'm painting something at the front, if I've got something left on my brush, I'll put some in the coach party at the back there as well. We need some Arabs. Of course, they've got flowing gowns, haven't they? I don't know what they call them, gowns or what they call them. I'm sure there's a proper name for them. Look at them. They're having a chat, them two. They say, what do you think about this Napoleon or that cannonball? Terrible. Mind you, we've got some tourists you've seen. You want to spend the money. Put Fred a head on. More than that one.
push my head on the on the people up the up on that coach party going up the bank there. They're only, they're only tiny, these people, because don't forget that that is further back than these people stood by its legs. So they're going to be smaller. You can't do them the same size. Them two Arabs have got no heads on yet, so we better, we better sort them out as well, because they don't look, they don't look right without, without heads. Get, get a few more figures in first. That's the hands. You see, Fred's a bit a bit bigger than them because he's 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 closer to us, and they're closer to the legs of the Sphinx. And these people in this coach party here, they they they're still busy. It's a fair old walk up to them pyramids. I bet they're saying, especially in this heat. talking to that one there looks a bit lonely what you might see from time to time folks is the the, the, the camera is auto focus and when I put my hand there it tries to focus on the hand so you might get a slight blip it's nothing to worry about you're not going your eyes are not going funny it's my my webcam that's that's causing the problem there them two are happy now they've got heads on busy chatting These are tourists, these, these, some of the Arabs there, that's, that's, that's not tourists. Because Fred's there on his own, we we'll have to put Mabel in, but Mabel's got to go in there sometime. She won't let him get to, to Egypt on his own, I'll tell you. After they're married, here she is, here's Mabel. With her CNA jumper on. Some more people in yellow up on the on the hillside there. Well, it's a big bus that I tell you. We've got a few a few passengers there. There's Mabel. Oh, she's a bit nice, lass. She's leaning towards Fred. I think he's asking that. How, how, how much, should we ask these Arabs how much it is for a camel ride? You got some shorts on, white shorts. This is not like Mabel at all. Doesn't like to show her knees.
There's got ten lectures. She's really enjoyed this holiday. In fact, that, that, that bloke near the front of the foot, it, it looks a bit lonely. We'll have to get somebody for him to talk to as well. That's it, he's... Yellow top on, he's black haired lad. That basically, we, we've got eight eight figures there. I don't like even numbers, so we better put another another Arab in probably. Uh, and next to Fred and Mabel. And what they can do then is they, they can ask him the price of a camel ride, can't they? Here he comes, Mohammed, his name. I don't know how they keep these outfits so white, you know, because they, they, there's, there's a lot of dust and that's about. But they seem to. It's only small, but beautifully marked. his face. And his hands. So I think he's saying, oh, is, it cost you a fortune on that camel. I can do it cheap for you. Right, near the foreground, it looks a bit bland, this this, this front bit here, and, and it's, it's, it's a rocky, rocky area, so I think we better put one or two rocks in the foreground here, just to to depict the the area as it is, and also it, it will bring it forward a bit for us, won't it? At this corner, bring it in front of the Sphinx, if you like. A bit more, bit more around this front here. One or two bits where the shadow is as well. I said that they've, they've hewed it out of solid rock, this thing. So it's not going to be a pavement, is it? Not going to be flat. Let's brought this bit forward here. Let's see if we can put a bit of other colour into this as well. Bring it towards us. I think we've just about finished that, folks. Uh, a bit of a bit of shadow on there. I'm, I'm, I'm fiddling now. I'm, I'm looking for things to do, and I shouldn't. It's not a good idea to fiddle. Because once you start fiddling, you start putting things you shouldn't do. Mm. 
got two more figures in here. Oops, not that one. Too, too blobby that one. Make it a bit darker so it stands out more on the hillside. This coach party is really having a good time. I'm getting to a stage where I'm, I'm, I'm looking for things to do. And it's not a good idea that. See, I'm fiddling now, see? Putting some dark on there, the side of the... the their caftans, what they were the call them, I don't know what they call them. Yeah, that's 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 it's time you took the brush off me, so I'm, 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 I am fiddling, and I shouldn't fiddle. I think that's got to be that's got to be enough now. Uh, this is our, our the, the, the pyramids of Giza, uh, fronted by the the Sphinx. A beautiful spot, and well worth painting. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, uh, give us a like or a subscribe or, or, or whatever you do, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But for now, it's goodbye. Goodbye, folks.